Welcome back to uh, Mar Hall. And the Marhall.com Scottish Classic well underway. Heading into the closing stages, and I think we're going to see a bit of a dust up today. Here is our glorious joint leader, James Moore. Slip from 12 under back to 11 under, been joined by Dave Coupland. So, two Englishmen at the moment topping the leaderboard here in Scotland. McAllister, who has just been steady in his progress during the day. I'm not surprised. It's a really good method. I like his golf swing. It's neat, it's tidy. And then he goes and does that. But that's, you know, he's come from the rough, can't control the ball as well. Now, this is the man that could put the cat amongst the pigeons in these closing stages. He's shown us some quite dramatic golf today. But I don't think the chicken wing after the shot is all that encouraging. This one's going to trickle on as well. But Garcia Grout, been fun to watch. Breeze, a major factor in these closing holes. Long range putt for Birdie. And when you get that far away, you're happy to walk off with a par. Callister then. A little bit of protection from the trees on this part of the course, but it really is starting to get very blustery here at Mar Hall. Oh, that will do very nicely indeed. Right then, time to hear from John. Let's see how he does at the 17th. Well, we're here at 17, par 3. 201 yards, it says on the card. I mean, it is a little diamond of a hole. Well, it ain't a little diamond, it's an absolute beast. You've got these two bunkers there. It says 198 yards to carry them. Two beautiful big trees on the left-hand side, which guard that left-hand side of the green. And the depth of this green on that left-hand side is so, so narrow. I mean, you've got to land it on a dime. Now, the trick of this is to aim dead centre of the green, let nature take its course with my little draw, and try and land it next to the flag. I mean, this is an absolute little stunner, and when under the cosh, this is going to be vital. Right then. Come on, baby. Let's show them how it's done. Come on. I think that'd be all right. Happy with that one. He's going to do a Howard Clark one of these days, isn't he? <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, Howard Clark at the 17th at Sawgrass. Did a piece for Sky once and stood up there early morning and hold it. I think John might do that. Definitely. It's, it's coming. It's coming. Good shot from Copeland, though. Now then, Garcia needs this if he's going to get this little roll on to the clubhouse. Had a great start to his round. Had some, hit some dream shots. Well, he's got that for birdie to go to uh, 11 under. Yeah, that 15th hole is almost like your last real good birdie opportunity. This 17th, as John was telling you, it's a tough par three. And you'd be happy with being there for two. Yeah, you can see the way the grass was blowing behind that green and the way some of the leaves are blowing on the trees. Putting now is becoming a treacherous occupation. But that's very well done from the Spaniards. So uh, Garcia moves himself to 11 under. I quite fancy him for it today, actually, Garcia. I, I think he'll take these conditions on. I don't forget about this chap. Callister now gets to 10 under. And as we were saying, Simon, I think 11's the number. So if somebody gets to 12, you've got to think they're probably going to get this. Well done. Tied it up by Coopland. And he will approach the final hole with a real chance to set a score and test the rest. Now Robert Shaw letting go of the club. Just didn't have the distance on that one and uh, a nasty little kick out to the left. Big hole this for young David. Oh dear, hand off the club again. And I think maybe just thought about it on the tee there, Ross. Suddenly hit him that he was in the lead and that, oh, how about that for a bonus? <laughs> 
he may be not aware of that. You can see there's white horses on the Clyde. Put you your like driver away, get your surfboard out. A bit of windsurfing, that'd be good, wouldn't it? You'd disappear. I'd like to see John Morgan do a piece on that. <laughs> He'd nail it. Now then, third shot, more repair work to be done at the 15th for Robert Short. He's just had a couple of really strange holes, and unfortunately for him, that's put pay to his challenge. Can you believe it? Middle of the fairway. Trying to just avoid that tree, which he's done. Great golf shot. Great golf shot from Copeland. I'll tell you what, if he can take 11 into the clubhouse, then he'll be happy. If he can take 12, he'll be delirious. Yeah, especially after that tee shot. I think Copeland looking good now. Robert Shaw not so happy, and the pressure kind of just feeds down the field now towards the likes of Garcia and Moore. I remember this is short par five playing straight downwind, so no more than a nine iron second shot for Moore, and he's had a lot of really good sort of shortish irons online, but hasn't taken the wind into effect. Right then, is it going to be Coopland's day? This is massive. Not quite. Well, fair play to him. He gave it a run. Double breaker came off right to left and back the other way at the end. Never easy to judge. Now, this would nullify what's going on at the 18th at the moment. It's a very, very outside chance. And once again, a little angry reaction there from Garcia Grout because he's left himself with a horrible one on the way back. Says Eagle part here, but... I think if you went up and said, do you want to put a four on your card, he'll say yes. Beautiful. Every chance of doing that. McAllister for birdie. It's all happening. Chance is coming thick and fast now. 16, one of the harder holes on the closing stretch. Not really one of those holes you're earmarking as a, a real birdie opportunity. Now then, Coopland, roll it in. 11 under, put your feet up and relax. Beautifully done. Well, that is a good day's work from young Dave Coopland in his first season as a pro. He leads in the clubhouse. Yeah, fantastic. 66 on a very blustery, difficult day. Just the one drop shot. That shows you how well he played today. Rolled in then by Garcia Grout. That took some nerve. And that means the excitement of the Spaniard approaching the final holes is still very much alive. More then to roll this in. And he reclaims the outright lead. Well played, Moore. Right then, where's John now? We're at 16. Dog leg, par four, tee box right there. I'm stood in prime position. I've got 142 from this beautiful white dot. Now I've got bunkers down the left, pin way up in the distance, beautiful tree. My ball's just landed up here. I've hogged it quite close to these bunkers. I've left myself in a region of about 135 yards in. Now the green looks at me and it's, you can't really see much of it because it's, the depth of it is nothing to it. You've got a bunker that's right bang in the middle of the green. It's kind of like the 12th hole at Augusta. You know, you really need to get your yardage right. Now, I've got a wedge, but I'm thinking, I don't want to spin it too much. So I might ask my caddy to go and grab me a 9-iron. And where is he? James? James? Uh, I cut top man. Well done, James. Legend, mate. He's a, good, he's a good lad. Don't pay him enough, I don't think. All right, anyway. Now, the trick of this, I don't want it to spin too much. So I'm going to play a nice, sensible shot and get this one on the dance floor. Yardage is very important. Hands forward. Don't swing too hard, because I don't want to generate too much spin. Come on. Now, are you good enough? I think it might be. 
I'd be quite happy with that. As you can see, that was where I hit my second shot. Now we're on the green. 10 yards separates me right here. Not much to it whatsoever. Must have the right club. That's where my shot became, you know, finished up and might have had to sack my caddy. But as I come right here, this is where the pin position is going to be, final day. And now if I'm coming in from a height, I'm going to have to spin this baby. Coming in, I'm going to demonstrate it to you now. I'm going to have to flip that baby back, try and land it soft and get it close to that pin. What I don't want to do is top spin it and run through this green and leaving myself an absolute horrible, horrible putt back. This is a great, great hole. Much, much needed yardage, course management. Make that birdie, make that par. Could be thumbs up at the end of the tournament. Thanks, John. Well, Robert Shaw's got to take it on. Add the wind in, of course, Ross, and the whole thing's just a horrible mess. Definitely, and the key to that is hitting the fairway, of course. If you've got the fairway, you've got the control over your golf ball, which is why we saw Robert Shaw there struggling. Now, McAllister, don't count this young man out yet. Minus 10 on the 17th tee. Come on. Come on. There you go. There you go. Beautifully done. Tough to get it any closer than that with that flag tucked in close to the bunker on the left. Now, Cox at 18. Is this where we're going to see the drama today? We've already got Coopland in the clubhouse at 11 under. Moore leading out on the course at 12 under. But there's several players that you would fancy for a go at that lead. This is one of them. Now, can Garcia get inside the uh, ball of McAllister? He mustn't be too greedy. He looks like he, he's trying to draw that in and he's left it out to the right. Short and right always come together. Long and left, short and right. That's because of the angle of the club face. He'll go and drain that now, won't he? Cox then up the hill, coming back to the clubhouse. We'll see a lot of this young fella. Good golf swing. It's a really nice method. Nice, friendly, welcoming closing hole. Yeah, chance to attack there. Now Robert Shaw's got himself in a bit of a pickle at 16. Trying to think his way out of trouble. Not bad, but he's got to find another decent putt to save his skin. McAllister to get up there with the leaders. Moore will still have a shot on him, but... Can't do it, I'm afraid. Just felt he needed that one, Ross, if he was going to take something up the 18th. Yeah, definitely, that was... Uh, uh, he does have the opportunity on 18, but... You need to give yourself every opportunity in those closing holes. Go for it. Don't hold back. Sometimes you've only got one chance to win. This to stay at eight under. A lot of these guys, remember, still chasing the money, which equates to points on the order of merit, and that will not help Robert Shaw's cause, I'm afraid. The money comes as a result of what you do, so... Don't think of the money. That's the key thing that I would say to the young guys. And Cox finishes off his day. One under par. Moves himself to eight under. And a decent bit of work from him, but won't be contesting the lead. Oh, five bogeys, really the key to that 69. Big par putt, this. Well done. Well done. And Garcia Grout with a big broad smile keeps himself right in the mix. Look at this. James Moore leads it by just a single shot. Coopland, well, he's all relaxed back in the clubhouse after that fabulous 66. But something tells me it's all going to kick off after the break. Stay with us. <laughs>